today we are going on an island called Brach. Maybe there is a car coming. I know it's very distant. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, question. Uh, yeah. uh, the place to take the billets for the boats are there. Yeah. But we take a Jadrolinija boat. Yeah. So do we go directly? Yes. There is video of our Croatia trip not too much happened this time around we simply wanted to visit an island close to split and spend some time at a beach called Bol. however editing this whole trip made me think a lot about different ways in which we travel and the mere privilege of being able to see so many parts of the world I'm fortunate in that many of my experiences are contrast or complementary what I have come to name bridge experiences. This means experiences that connect to opposing sides of an experience, therefore creating a more whole experience and perspective. How often do we do ridiculous stuff? That's ridiculous. Stuff? I never do stuff like that. Really? So we're gonna rent a buggy. We've decided to do that randomly because why not? places you can put it next to me yeah next to me childhood was spent between Uganda and South Africa and there travel had always been a thing of necessity more than pleasure. When my family moved to Denmark that had been the biggest journey of travel I had ever been on. However, I remember many of my first summer holidays in Denmark as a child spent at home in a little town on the mainland of Jutland. My sisters and I would spend the holidays creating our own adventures where they'd be walking our town dry and exploring every forest and street and corner. When my mom could afford to, she would give us money to go to the nearby big city to watch movies or get a kebab or even do a little shopping for the summer. That alone was enough travel for a while. I feel that how we travel can often be a thing of culture. For my family, our travel culture was really local and usually what could be reached by food or bike. This is also where my love for walking came from, I think. Listen 
Are we very loud for people? That must be so disgusting. Obnoxious. <laughs> Maybe these are the people that are doing like the island hopping. <coughs> Imagine us. <laughs> 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 cheering for us to be kicked out of the island. Oh my god, it's so shocking. Later on, as we settled in, we would travel to near countries with our mom, like spending some weeks in Sweden or Germany with family friends. Those kinds of summers gave my sisters and I relief for when summer would end and we too would feel like we had something of value to share when the teacher asked that dreaded question. What and where did you go for the summer holiday? For most Danes, going away and usually south of Europe for the holiday was the norm. Many would not imagine the privilege that really was for many, even within their own borders. For children raised by a single immigrant mother, though, that was for the most time not feasible, especially not a holiday that included flight tickets and accommodation for several days and perhaps even visas. For those summers without, we also enjoyed the travel we could experience from the sun and adventure-filled movies, or books, or stories, whatever we could get our hands on. However, once I got a little taste of travel and visiting other parts of the world and cultures and nature, I took advantage of every opportunity that came my way. I did my internships abroad with the help of grants for students. I went on every class trip arranged by my school that my mom would afford or we could work for. I took study abroad opportunities that my school offered, which often helped with accommodation and sometimes you could get a grant for that as well. In my travels today, I carry along much of the wisdom my film experience with travel gave to me, but also much of the appreciation. I feel such gratitude to be able to explore the world in my own little ways. I notice also much of the privileges I now have that I didn't have before. As someone who lives in the global north and holds a passport that allows easy access to a great part of our common home and earth, I know and feel the difference. It is also interesting to remember that for a great portion of human history, most humans were nomadic and moved about mostly freely without owning nor settling but belonging to each other and the earth. As a decolonial daughter, I previously felt rather conflicted about traveling to all these European places, to be honest, which for the most part I do because they are closer but also often cheaper to get to. And I guess at the fact that I'm a queer black woman, I feel that sometimes some places do feel safer. Yet I have also come to understand now that places and spaces on this earth have existed before the word European or African, what have you, had ever been uttered into the cosmos. When I visit most places, I must be honest and admit that, for the most part, I am mostly moved by the desire for visiting her, the earth, and as far and as wide as she stretches. I think it's also because in our day-to-day -day life, I know so much about us, the humans, but I don't know a lot about her, the spaces, the different ways she exists. I want to see which plants grow in different corners of the world, the rivers and waterfalls, and tastes of tomatoes and aubergines, the color of the sunsets, the weight of the wind on the skin, the salt quantity in the water, the taste of water, the shapes of the landscapes and the poetic ecosystems of each forest in the country or parks in the city. 
I would be most lying if I accredited the cultures, languages, architecture, people to be what pulls me the most. It is not that I do not care about those reasons when I travel. However, it is often the nature and how people interact with that nature that moves me the most, and the unique creative expressions in different parts of the world. Yes, even in urban areas, I find myself drawn to the areas with the street covered with trees, or the romantic parks that give the residents of the concrete jungle a space of refuge to reconnect, like the beautiful encompassing mountains hugging the city of Barcelona, the fantasy-filled gardens of Portugal, and the intentionally curated parks and forests of Denmark. It is the plant-filled restaurants, cafes, and spaces, the herbs and spices used in local teas and traditional breads, the beautiful rebellious arts and buildings. It is also the musicians, all the artists in the street, drawing a crowd to them, and asking us to stop and be present in a shared experience in a busy street. We travel for such different reasons, and I think, truly, we travel to even meet and explore other parts of ourselves. Whether through nature, culture, languages, or even each other, I cannot imagine who I would have been without the many places I have been fortunate to call home or feel home, even for a little brief moment. To end, I truly think the little curious and adventurous seeking girl I used to be, I know, is truly satisfied with how I have chosen to move through life. With exploring a little town with joy because travel was not an option, exploring new ideas, worlds through the travels of others, but also all the big travels across the world that helped me meet and connect to other parts of our humanity, and I shared home. For all of that, I am truly, truly grateful, and I hope in some way when I share my travels, you also get to see that what I used to see. And it inspires you or moves you in your own way to also travel, whether within, outside, or exactly where you are. Thank you for being part of my travels, whether I'm moving or just thinking different or growing or expanding. I truly do appreciate all of that. We know that.